All right, looks like we're up here. Hi, everybody. It's uh, Joe Chaffee here on this New Year's Day. Hope everybody had a terrific New Year, and uh, I hope you're all staying warm. We had a lot of record lows that were set around my neck of the woods, especially in, in uh, cities that had uh, perhaps smaller data sets. For example, New York City wound up with its second coldest New Year. Uh, arrival with a temperature at 10 last night at midnight and it got down to 7 but the record low was 4 below 0 so that was no record but there were other records that were set nearby and we are looking at uh, the following sequence of events as far as the uh, weather in the northeast and northern mid-Atlantic states is concerned and that is we're going to see temperatures moderate um, over the next couple of days and Raymond uh, Gold uh, Raymond just reminded me too. Uh, Albany got it getting to eight below zero this morning. I believe that this is the sixth or seventh consecutive day of below zero readings, which is the longest streak since 1996 for Albany. So this is you know there's a number of records like this being set, and in fact, uh, in um, for New York City uh, today was the sixth day that temperatures did not get out of the teens, and the record is. 11 days in a winter season and that was back in 1917 so uh, 1917 was a very very cold winter 1617 and uh, we're kind of uh, taking numbers to uh, the 1917 level um, okay so we're going to moderate over the next couple of days we're going to see another uh, arctic blast of air and this one will be i think the coldest of the bunch for areas in the northeast uh, down to as far south as say uh, new jersey and uh, through much of Pennsylvania, maybe even into Maryland and, and northernmost Virginia in terms of temperatures. And I think there'll be a lot of areas that will risk going below zero uh, Friday, uh, Saturday morning and uh, Sunday morning, especially if we put down a snow cover. And of course, front and center will be the development of a major uh, Atlantic Ocean storm, uh, and that's going to be moving up the East Coast just offshore. And I'm gonna spend much of my time today uh, talking about that because that really is the um, one the, the uh, thing that is, is going to be front and center now on, on everyone's mind. Now I just want to point out and I think this is really really important uh, to emphasize here uh, there is a, probably more um, volatility here in terms of the models and what kind of solution uh, we're going to have out of this than normal and I think part of the reason for that is because we have this um, ridiculous, let's call it, uh, Arctic pattern that we're in, where the atmosphere is kind of pushed to an extreme, and it's, I, I think models are having a real tough time coming to terms with this. So I want to show you what's happening first with the upper air and why this is, go why this is going to happen, regardless of what the outcome will be with, with respect to snow. And there are going to be places, by the way, in the southeast that are going to see snow that normally don't see snow. And re regardless of, of, um, of the outcome as far as snow is concerned, the cold part of this equation is pretty much locked in. Uh, we're, going to, we're, going to show, we're going to show you how the upper air pattern evolves. And then I'm going to show you different model views of this with regards to how this might play out. So let's look first at the GFS. The upper air with this, uh, the, of the models, similar in the general sense, but take a look at uh, the indentations that you see in the flow. If you go from St. Louis down into Texas, that is a strong southern shortwave uh, trough. We've got another trough, shortwave trough that's up from northeastern Minnesota uh, back over into northeastern Nebraska. And, and as I move the, this uh, along on the loop, you can see that the troughs try to phase together, yet at the same time, there is energy that gets ejected out ahead. If you look out off the North Carolina coast, you can see you know, indentations here in the flow. That southern energy, some of it gets kicked out ahead. And I, uh, models are having a very difficult time grasping this. And grasping how this all ultimately plays out. You've got a lot of northern energy here getting involved and low pressure that develops winds up moving up the coast. But the big, the among other questions is, do we tr tr the low, a low that starts out 
north of the Bahamas and then runs northeastward uh, with the target being Nova Scotia, uh, runs up the coast at an, at, in such a way where it could possibly produce snows for, let's say, coastal Georgia, South and North Carolina, through eastern Virginia, up the, Del, up the Delmarva Peninsula, and into southern New Jersey. Then there could be a hole in between that and then you start to get into more snow as you go, uh, or, or the snowfall in this area would be very light from, say, central New Jersey on up toward Cape Cod and Boston, and then it picks up again as you run up into coastal Maine. That is one possibility here because you could wind up with a surface low that gets kicked eastward before it lifts northward. And this is how the whole upper air plays out. And, of course, when that trough lines up right along the coast over the weekend this is when we get into that brutally cold air now when it, we look at this at the surface and models are you know this is how it's going to play out at the surface i'm going to start with the gfs so we can see different scenarios here of how this all plays <coughs> excuse me so here's our eastern view of the gfs of course, we're already at the point where the storm is the storm is long gone, and we're going to see this thing deepen to um, pressures that you normally see in, say, Category Two hurricanes. I mean, this is going to be uh, quite the formidable storm that will eventually develop out in the ocean, and there might even be some coastal flooding issues uh, for parts of the Northeast out of this uh, as, as the storm rolls along. It is going to be moving at a very fast clip, so. You can watch the surface low that starts to develop off the east coast of Florida. We don't see, we see storms form like this, but we don't see them often moving up the east coast the way this one is. And here's the um, late afternoon GFS model. You can see how wrapped up this thing is. You can also see where the back edge of the snow is. It's just inland of the coast. Now, I will tell you that the afternoon, the late afternoon GFS model run did shift a little bit more to the left. We've seen this sort of very small leftward shifts from the GFS, so this would imply that there would be some snow out of this, but it's not going to produce a big event in terms of snowfall, uh, believe it or not. If we uh, show you uh, the uh, actual precip that it produces, uh, when we uh, look at uh, the total accumulated pr precipitation, uh, you can see that <clears throat> most of the amounts are light. Uh, it doesn't really produce very much as you go west of the coast. Maybe some two and three tenths inch amounts over Long Island. Uh, also over the Carolinas you start to get into some half inch amounts along the immediate coast but it, it's just far enough offshore on this particular model run that we would not have any kind of big issues with this. Now I'm going to switch over to um, the uh, NAM model. Now, this is the late afternoon NAM model run. And here's, and I'll work it, at it backwards. The NAM uh, also half inch amounts from eastern Long Island, <clears throat> and it has a different uh, look in terms of the structure of the low. So it actually implies that there could be some heavy snows for eastern Long Island, southeastern New England, and then, of course, it goes kind of nuts uh, along the Carolina coast down into Georgia and Florida and produces some ridiculous snow amounts there uh, I'll put the map up <clears throat> you know just to show you that this what this model did I mean it's producing you know amounts that you never see in coastal Georgia and South Carolina uh, if this were to verify the uh, GFS on the other hand um, shows um, far less I mean it does actually produce some six inch amounts for eastern North Carolina but you know, maybe a couple of inches in some of the coastal areas, even down into northeastern Florida. So, you know, you got one model that really kind of goes uh, crazy with with um, with precip there. The NAM being very aggressive with precip in the southeast because it has development a little bit closer to the coast. And here's <clears throat> what the NAM does with the surface low, and it has a a, a rather um, unusual structure with the low. And we'll uh, move it along here, and because the NAM goes hour by hour, and we have to uh, wait for all this to load here, so um, just give it a second, and then we'll punch up um, the NAM model here. Let me bring that back, and oh, come on, 
up we go. Okay, so let's run this through. And there you can see, you know, this precip developing off the Florida coast. And now we're going to, uh, 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 sorry about that. Now we're going to see a low form. I think everybody's going in and looking at this weather-wise. But there's your low just east of Miami at, um, let me just make sure I can see the time here. This is Wednesday morning at um, 4 a.m. And off we go. Now, there's the uh, big snows for southeast Georgia and ice and snow as you move into south and north Carolina. Again, the NAM very aggressive here. But there's your surface low. And you see how it kind of coils out east and then runs out to the northeast. And it sort of arcs the snow back westward uh, toward the coastline into New Jersey, the Hudson Valley. But the heaviest precip with the NAM does stay offshore on this run. So, you know, nothing is, it, it, I can't really come to any sort of conclusion in terms of how this is going to play because of the model variation. And we have another variant, and that is the Canadian model. And I, I think the reason why the models are, are handling these, this system, each one handling it a bit differently, is because of the fact that when we, I showed you the upper air, each model handles differently those fractured short waves. And the Canadian has the least fractured and the most dynamic look of all the models um, as it kind of focuses everything on one trough. And here we have the low that develops on the Canadian and it tracks it more north-northeast. It never really pulls it east and then turns it north. It just kind of moves it along on a northeast or north-northeast course which is the furthest west of all the models, and, and you can see it produces some heavy snows uh, for uh, the Delmarva Peninsula uh, on northward through parts of central New Jersey, and then eventually some of that gets into, get heavier snows into Long Island and southern New England. So the Canadian actually paints the snowiest scenario here, and we'll uh, give you the uh, view here on the snowfall forecast map uh, from the Canadian model. And there's the total. So you, you see how it, there's like a gap here where it just kind of lightens up a little bit uh, for Connecticut and Long Island and it picks up again over Maine. Cause, so that's part of the variant of the track that, that's happening. But uh, all the models have a very intense storm. And I think what's going, what's going to happen is uh, in, in trying to figure this out, we really have to figure uh, where uh, the upper air structure, which model has the better handle on the upper air structure. Is it going to be the Canadian, which really has the most dynamic look here with the trough? Even though it does fract has a fractured low to the east, it really has a very sharp northern stream uh, shortwave trough that's swinging around and going negative. And, and, and that is what causes the model to develop all this big snow on the western side. There are other models that agree with this idea, and there are other models that um, support the notions of the, the GFS. And by the way, the European, which supports the notion more of the GFS than uh, the Canadian. Although the European and the Canadian up until now have been pretty well lockstep. But you can see the kind of fractured look here in the upper air with these shortwave troughs. It's not nearly as dynamic as the Canadian is uh, at, at the same uh, time frame. And when we look at the um, surface low that the European has, uh, I mean, it does have a wound up animal and it does have it for the first time west of 70 west, but it's it, it's still kind of far to the south and where it's just at 70. If it, the Canadian has this up uh, more near 37 or 38 north, whereas the European has it down more around 36. So we're going to have to really kind of resolve which model has, the, has it right in terms of the p position. Because from here, it shoots it out northeast toward Nova Scotia. And speaking of Nova Scotia, I just want to uh, point out, let me uh, go back to the um, uh, GFS. I want to also point, it out, point this out for our friends in the Canadian Maritimes. Uh, this is going to potentially be a, a fairly, uh, this is going to be a formidable storm for the Canadian Maritimes, uh, but particularly for Nova Scotia. And I'm putting up the map for southeastern Canada here. And let me just raise this up just a little bit. 
I want you to be able to see the time frame. So I'm going to make this map just a little bit smaller. Okay, so why don't we go back to the beginning here. And they're starting to load up. Okay, so we are now, you know, Tuesday into Wednesday. You're going to start to see the low come burst on the scene here as we are at Thursday uh, um, afternoon and evening. Uh, we get snow. Uh, the GFS has the low tracking getting very intense, and you know there will be whole gales with this. Uh, heavy snows start to shift northward with a change over to rain. The low goes over eastern Nova Scotia, probably changes back to snow, and eventually makes its way somewhere between Newfoundland and Labrador as it runs up toward the northeast. So this is going to be a pretty powerful storm uh, for the, the Canadian matter of times, but I, I think particularly Nova Scotia. And this track does favor a change over to rain with heavier snows uh, for New Brunswick and perhaps for south for uh, southeastern Maine uh, as that low moves on up toward the northeast. So uh, still a lot of uncertainty with regards to where all of this is going and I don't think we're going to have much resolution on this for at least uh, maybe not till Wednesday and even then I think uh, given the situation here uh, the uh, Forecasters might be uh, very uh, a tad nervous uh, come uh, Wednesday uh, with regards to this. You know, I'm I'm, I'm kind of looking at this the way I have it set in my mind is that we have we have this unprecedented Arctic air uh, invasion into the U.S. and into the eastern U.S. and I just wonder with the atmosphere stretched <clears throat> to this extreme level where we're going to wind up having perhaps a, a, an unusual outcome. Uh, for uh, maybe a number of different areas. So we just want to bear that in mind. And then, of course, once this goes by, we're going to see, <clears throat> I think, uh, again, uh, a, 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 a pretty good shot that places like norm that normally don't see below zero temperatures or when they do, uh, it's rare, uh, New York City, Philadelphia. I, I, I think it's certainly possible. If we wind up with the snow cover, I think it's likely. The uh, other thing is that after this weekend, I think we're going to see a moderation uh, in the weather pattern for a little bit as a whole. Um, I didn't really get a chance to evaluate the long range. Uh, there is going to be a, 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 a warm up early next week ahead of a, a weather system going by to the north with a cold front and another high behind it with some very cold air. But I don't know um, how sustained that cold air is going to be. And I don't want to just kind of arbor, I guess I could just ar show it. Uh, it'll, I haven't looked at it, so I, I'm going to be looking at it uh, for the first time with you. So let me bring this back up. We'll uh, do a little bit of long-range stuff. Um, and in the meantime, hang on one second here. I don't want to lose the screen. Uh, so let me bring up the, uh, we'll bring the GFS back up front and center. I'll bring up the upper air. And... So, a little bit of patience here, folks. I'm getting a little better with maneuvering this stuff on the fly. And that's it. Okay, so this is at the point where the storm in the northeast is done. So why don't we run through the uh, jet stream? And I'm, you know, it looks like that, that trough is going to wind up lifting out. And I apologize for the map loading issues, but I'm thinking that uh, Levi Cowan's Tropical Tidbits is extra busy with a lot of people really interested uh, in uh, the weather here in the east. So we do have another trough that swings around, but I think the um, uh, with, with, with the jet going southwest, it probably will allow us to warm up because that Arctic jet pulls out and there's a bit of a time gap between the time by the time it pulls out and the next trough swings in. So that'll allow for some moderation early next week. And after that, surprise. Oh, come on. Here we go. We do looks like we do have a bit of a vortex up way up in uh, northern Canada. But uh, I'm thinking, you know, it might try to warm up here in the east uh, as we... Uh, move through the middle part of the month and beyond. Nothing especially crazy, 
but the Arctic connection appears to be cut off uh, in the longer term. Uh, so if you're looking for a break from the, this extreme weather, um, I think you know the, you're, we're probably going to get some kind of a break. But again, um, with respect to specifics, uh, there's no way to know at this point how that plays. This is what happens, by the way, with me anyway. When, when we start to, when we start to get the, uh, that we're dealing with the storm uh, coming up front and center, I really don't have a whole lot of a lot of time to evaluate the long range. I didn't even really look at the European too closely. Uh, beyond uh, you know the f the five day period, so let's leave that for another time. And in the meantime, let us go to the chat board. So hang on one second here, folks. And again, uh, I'll do just a collective hello to everybody. So you know, we'll, I'm just going to try and uh, I'm going to run through a l your your posts. Um, and uh, Garo Vestas wants one to four inches for Giant Stadium. Uh, thankfully, the season is over with, so we don't have to deal with them anymore until next next fall. Uh, Eleven in Terrytown, Adam Fitz. Thanks for the ob. Um, we're gonna, you know, Jason Schaefer. Um, you, ah, okay, good. Um, I, I I got you just before you started updating people. Excellent. Um, James NASCAR fan. Let's see. Minus six in Monticello this morning. The Epic Hunter. Yeah, Poughkeepsie got to eight below, which was incredible. Um, seven day possible plowable snow for you in Middletown is increasing. Oh, you know, you know what? This, I, this, you know, you've got some models that want to push the accumulating snow into eastern Pennsylvania um, or even further west. I'm not going to say no to it because. Again, uh, this situation is a little bit on the unusual side, and, and uh, you know, we're kind of all struggling with this, and I think models are all struggling with it as well. And by the way, you may have noticed through all of this, I have not uttered the B word or the SS word, uh, blizzard, snowstorm. Uh, I haven't uttered that uh, because I'm really unsure. You know, Usually at this point, at this stage of the game, when we are... You know, within 72 hours of snow starting, which we are, I like to put out an early, uh, an early call snow forecast map. But I decided not to do that tonight because I'm really uh, unsure of how uh, this is all going to play out. I want to see some sort of continuity develop between these, you know, the models, and in terms of <clears throat> how the precip is going to line up. Uh, when when we get when, when we get this underway, and I got to tell you, it's certainly possible you could have this 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 huge storm developing offshore in terms of pressure and in terms of the kind of winds that are going to be produced from this, and at the same time uh, wind up not seeing a flake. I have seen that over the years. Uh, if you go, we go back. There have been a number of times where we have had you know very intense storms develop just offshore and for whatever reason in terms of the setup and the positioning and the and the upper air that you know i don't we don't we wind up with very little or some places that normally don't get snow get a lot but the places that usually get heavy snow wind up with very little so uh, there is no um there's no answer at this point in terms of um of what we're going to get and that's why i kind of decided to just wait a little bit more uh, if I feel a little confident late this evening I might do something if not I may uh, wait until tomorrow uh, before I put that put out an early early call I just the con my confidence level is zero Jason Schaefer the Canadian always cranks everything up too much but it might be justified at this point if it if it's got you know the, the question about the Canadian is does it have the 500 the upper air structure correct all these models have different ideas about how the upper air is going to come out. We don't know which one is going to be the right one. If the Canadian is right, it's going to be a, 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 a 8 to 12 inch snowfall from uh, Virginia up to southern New England, from coastal Virginia up through coastal southern New England, uh, including coastal New Jersey, Long Island, New York City, maybe back a little bit further to the west than that. But the other models have this more fractured look, and each one of them has a different view of how that look is fractured, which which causes uh, different outcomes. So, uh, w when I start to see them come together, uh, I'll, um, I'll 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 take a stab at um, at snowfall accumulation. 
And, you know, on the downside with respect to the Canadian is that it does tend to be, you know, uh, of all the models, probably the poorest performer. Um, it's going to have to operate on the notion of a broken clock being right twice a day. It has done um, the last, um, you know, last couple of weeks, though, it, it has held up pretty well. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention really to, um, to, to all of, you know, all the models that are out there. Sean K., thank you very much for hitting Super Chat tonight. Hot chocolate for me uh, to uh, warm me up uh, in this uh, brutal winter weather. Uh, Tom Adams was out for a mile walk and you were not brutalized. Now, you know what? I got to tell you, um, you know, when, when the wind is, when there's not a lot of wind, uh, it's reasonable. I mean, I actually, I, you, it doesn't, it, you know, it's easy, it's easier to take. The wind, I think, really makes the big difference. But if, if you're out there in, in uh, teens and single digits and there's not much wind, uh, I'm not really too bothered by it. Uh, David Fuller, the GFS has done poorly. I think all the models have had their moments where they have done poorly, um, including the European, over the last few weeks, uh, making a number of renegade storms that didn't 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 happen. Um, this one now we're in the short range, so we know that it's going to happen. We just you know we just kind of have to fine tune uh, all the details. Um, Christopher, do I think it's possible for Boston to see six to twelve? I think it's possible for Boston to see anything from 0 to 12 out of this. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I would feel very confident to be on the high end because, you know what, if it tracks further east before it starts shooting northward, uh, it may bring the, take the heavy precip east of Boston. I, uh, I, I think that that is something we'll have to look at. Miller A storms traditionally do well on the Euro, so my thought is follow the Euro and the NAM at this point. I think yeah, Scott. You know what? I think you have a you have a valid you you have a valid observation there. Um, the the, the uh, Euro and the Nam do tend to do a bit better with Miller A type storms. Um, and you know, one day maybe I'll I should do a video explaining to everybody what that uh, that means. So there there's a Miller A, Miller B. Uh, these are you know storms in terms of how they look like both at the surface and aloft. And you know how what winds up happening out of them. So um, one day when weather's kind of quiet, if we get into a warmer pattern here over the winter time for a short period, maybe I'll I'll, I'll try and do something with that, or maybe bring someone on that can explain it, um, uh, uh, explain it all. Uh, I'll get I'll have another guest weather guy or gal. Uh, GFS has lows too far east in the last few times ahead of snows. That's correct. Uh, that's another thing that we have to consider here is the fact that uh, we've seen whether uh, these systems shift. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about with regards to this, even though the situation's a bit different um, to some degree, uh, but we back in early December, the first of the snows where we had this, we were dealing with this uh, trough and the southern stream and whether the models were, they had kept it, uh, the two streams separate, um, but then at the very last minute, um, we uh, saw the models attempt to phase, and that changed the pers the uh, prospects for snow. Excuse me, up and down the east coast, and that happened in, in the la inside the 72-hour time frame. So I was kind of reminded of that a little bit today, uh, looking at you know that sort of fractured look on the upper air that uh, we might still see some, maybe a model surprise uh, come up uh, in the next uh, 24 uh, to 36 hours. So it is something. Uh, that you know, we're certainly going to have to watch for that there might be a last-minute shift to the west. And by the way, I should tell you that there are some models that are doing that and actually are uh, shifting far enough west where it brings uh, rain issues uh, for parts of eastern Long Island and for um, southeastern New England around Cape Cod. So uh, this is not an impossibility. Um, when you're dealing with depth like this and with all this energy running around, there could be a little bit of, um, you know, some last-minute uh, uh, last minute surprises. Okay, folks. Um, all right, Margaret, Fishing Adventure TV, you're an hour west of Baltimore. Will you see anything? I would say probably not from this. It's way too uh, – I, I think this is going to be too far east for you um, this time around. You're an hour west of Baltimore. You probably stand a better chance of seeing some colder, uh, some snow showers with the upper trough when it swings on through. But I don't think you're going to see snow uh, from the storm itself. Um, all right. So, uh, let, oh, Scott Reese, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Two hot chocolates for me. 
uh, as we uh, deal with the bitter cold air. Thanks for hitting Super Chat, Scott. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, brutal heat, brutal cold, brutal storms. Where does it end? I know. It's just brutal, isn't it, Tom? <laughs> well, brutal heat in my mind is when it's over 100 in places that where it normally doesn't get over 100. Brutal cold to me is where it gets down into single digits in places that normally don't get down into the single digits, especially but but especially if combined with the wind. If if it's down in the single digits because of radiational cooling and clear skies, I'm not really that's not that's nothing. That's easy. Uh, it's when you um, uh, uh, you've got the wind uh, part of the equation and you're dealing with the the wind chill issue. That's when it gets it's kind of nasty. I'm usually a big boy when it comes to this sort of thing, but even for me, the wind is uh, an issue. Um, John Schultz, I, I somewhere on here there should be a, a super chat button. I don't know how it shows up on your on, on your chat board if there's like a dollar sign or something, uh, but it's somewhere over uh, somewhere on there. Um, where is Cape Ann, Tom Adams? You know, remind, where is Cape Ann? Uh, system coming Wednesday night in New York City. Late Wednesday night, Dio, or early Thursday. Single digits east of Boston, Pete Turner, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Pele Turner. A single digits all day east of Boston, a brutal dog walk today. Yeah, pretty pretty tough, pretty tough, and another cold night uh, tonight. Um, let's see, do, before I go, do, I, do, I, do you think we will get snow from USA? always smiling oh okay so you're thinking does that storm you know what i didn't even give you uh, honestly I'll, i'm gonna do it um i'm not gonna bring it up because it'll take me a little too long so let me just i'll you, uh you're gonna have to take my word for it let me take a look really fast pull up what's going on in europe and always smiling the maps are a little slow to load so um let's see well, tomorrow morning, it looks like there's a little bit of snow uh, uh, into tomorrow afternoon in northern Scotland. But looking through the week, looks like a, at least through uh, Friday, anything that happens is going to be up in the north country. It does start to drag in a little bit of colder air over the weekend and some snows into central and southern England. Doesn't show a whole lot. Uh, then a high, nice high builds in and... You know, we got to stop having all these, you know, extremes of weather because it gets everybody on Levi Cowan's tropical tidbits and makes his sight busy. Then after that, as we go into the long range, looks like it's going to warm up a bit uh, and rain. So it doesn't look like the storm that the storm that runs up uh, into uh, Nova Scotia and toward Newfoundland, Labrador, um, comes right at you uh, from what I from from what I can see. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm just trying to get the last minute. All right, Iron Mine 10. Now you're talking lightning thunder on Long Island. Let's not push it yet. We're not there yet, okay? It's a little too soon. Let's figure out what's going to happen first. Okay, I'm I'm not sold here um, yet in any in any direction. Um, I, I'm just not. The the thing that nag that's nagging in the back of my mind right now is the fact that. You know, this Arctic air has been um, extreme. Uh, the the uh, Arctic jet has been in an extreme position. And I just wonder whether that's going to lead to some kind of an outcome that we're, we may not be expecting. So I'm going to be watching models very, very closely uh, over the next uh, uh, 48 hours to see how, uh, how, how they handle all this. And I, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking that there probably are going to be additional changes in terms of how they're approaching the forecast. All right, folks, um, let's call it a night here. I uh, will have a live Facebook uh, cast tonight at nine uh, at um, nine fifteen Eastern time. So uh, check out uh, Facebook at nine fifteen Eastern time. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, uh, and you can uh, we'll, we'll we'll have the new Nam out, or at least in the process of getting the new Nam. Um, so uh, I will be live blogging, let's call it live blogging or live streaming the new NAM 9.15 Eastern Time on Facebook. And uh, I will also 
uh, be putting up uh, the National Weather Service snow forecast maps later this evening on meteorologistjoechaffee.com, so you might want to check those out uh, as well. The links to everything are on the top of my channel page. Just look on the lower right corner of the banner. You should, should see um, links. And uh, sure, John Schultz, I'll put the... Uh, it's tropicaltidbits.com, and I'll just put it up here for you. There you go. And uh, you can uh, go ahead and uh, take a look. Uh, one of the best weather sites around for those of us who love to look at different kinds of maps and models and so on. Um, Levi, does, Levi Cowan does an absolutely uh, great job uh, with, with his site. And he's very generous that uh, he lets me use his maps. And then we, we thank him big time. All right, folks, have a great, uh, have a great rest of your evening. Uh, if uh, conditions warrant tonight, uh, I might do a surprise live stream around uh, midnight. Uh, we'll see how, uh, how things are when I get home, um, if I'm not too tired. Uh, don't make any conclusions on the models regarding, uh, he's not doing a live stream, therefore it's probably not, uh, uh, it's probably not going to be a snowstorm, or it probably is going to be a snowstorm. Don't come to any conclusions. It may just simply boil down to the fact that by the time I get home, uh, after a long drive, especially in this cold, I'm usually pretty wiped out. All right, folks, mm, see you later at Facebook, 9.15 Eastern Time, and possibly tonight for a quick live stream at midnight.